So, man, the BMF belt wasn't on the line last night, but Diego Lopez and Dan Ige certainly have cemented their name on the very short list of people that could be called to contend for that belt if the opportunity ever presented itself. That's right. I mean, Dan Ige, this guy was hanging out in his hotel room, probably about to buy the fight on TV, Dana White said, and then he gets the call, hey, instead of paying $79.99 for the fight, why don't you come make a couple hundred thousand dollars and be in the the co-main event? So, I mean, respect to Dan Ige, what can you say? He, he he dared to be great. He came up a little short, but I think he loses absolutely no stock. No. I think he probably gained some stock. And the same can be said for Diego Lopez because Diego Lopez was preparing for different opponent after different opponent. You know, T-City is a completely different fighter than Dan Ige was. This was already a short notice fight to begin with. So he's showing us that in a very short period of time that he's one of the top guys at 145, you know, came in on short notice himself and fought Mavsari Volev to a very close controversial decision. So this guy's got a lot of star power, but I want to get into the X's and O's of the fight itself because Dan Ige, you know, he didn't get that nickname 50K for nothing. He's got some lights out finishes and stuff like that on his resume. And that's where I figured that Diego may be a bit susceptible because I think his jujitsu is a little bit superior to his striking, although his striking is good, but he looked very good on the feet. He was able to find his way to the back multiple times, showed some really good grappling. Dan Ige showed a lot of heart and his ability to get out of some of those positions. Right. All in all, great night of, of, of fights for these two gentlemen who really stepped up and, and kind of helped save the card along with Alex Pereira and Yuri Prohaska. Yeah, they certainly did. And the UFC sees a lot of star potential in Diego Lopez. And I love that he didn't blink, he didn't budge. Obviously, we weren't in the in the rooms with him when he was getting all these different changes. Hey, at 3.30 in the morning, Ortega says he can't make 45. Can you go 55? Yeah, no problem. He probably just started hydrating up earlier. And then they said, okay, he's out with fever. Uh, we're trying to find a replacement. Okay. Okay, let me know who it is. And then they call and they say, hey, uh, it's about six o'clock. If you can come weigh in right now, if, as long as you're under 165, we've got Danny Ige here. He's ready to fight you. I thought that was one of the coolest things. And when you have a fight card like International Fight Week, there's so much on the line, right? And everybody saw this card just falling apart, right? When you have a Conor McGregor card, you don't have to stack it up, even if it is an International Fight Week, because he does all the heavy lifting. He's going to sell all the pay-per-views. And you have to save your other big names for other cards, kind of uh, uh, evenly distribute them so when when the conor mcgregor car fight fell off this card we were relying heavily on a big replacement and then a couple of big fights uh, to follow t-city diego lopez was guaranteed to be that i thought it was going to be a very exciting fight and i was interested to see what the grappling exchanges would look like because diego lopez is a very game grappler jujitsu practitioner and he's very good with the scrambles and we saw that last night you know dan Ige came in on 90 minutes notice a couple hours notice and brought everything he could possibly throw at Diego Lopez. And I love that Diego Lopez was patient. He understood that this was a completely different fight than what he had been preparing for. And Dan Ige has a lot of power. He respected the power by early on kind of being safe, being cautious, not going out there and trying to uh, disrespect a guy like Dan Ige and go out there for an early finish. Like, I'm sure if he would have found that, he would have gone for it. But he knew Dan Ige was a game fighter. He stays in shape. He's always ready. And I think it was smart for Diego Lopez to start kind of calculated. Of course, when he got his offense going, it was explosive. That's what he's known for, is packing a lot of power in his shots and totally being willing to engage in a firefight. He'll take a couple of shots as long as he's able to land his hard shots as well. The clinch work re- looked really good because Dan Ige tried to lock up a couple of times and he, p- he paid the price with some big body shots and even some big hooks to the head. So Diego's striking, in my opinion, has improved in the UFC. And I love that he was able to adapt on the floor you know, like we said, Danny Ige and T-City couldn't be more different opponents. And he was able to figure out Danny Ige in the short amount of time that he had. And, you know, it wasn't the most exciting fight in the world. It was a great fight. But for me, getting your hand raised in a, such a big high profile fight was very important. And even though the UFC had all these things lined up and they all fell, you know, on their face moments before the fight, these guys didn't blink. They didn't budge. They didn't think about it for a second. They said, yeah, we want to fight. We're going to help save this card. The UFC doesn't uh, let that stuff go unnoticed. I think Diego Lopez, his stock went through the roof last night, even though he didn't have the, the breakout performance. I think maybe he was hoping for some like a, like a Peyton Talbot did, right? He had a really great performance, and Dan Ige came in. I think they should renegotiate his contract to whatever it is, maybe something a little bit closer to what he got paid last night because I'm sure they backed the Brinks truck up for him. Take a fight on a couple hours' notice, and good things are going to happen to you. And there's some talks already about 
seeing this fight again, a rematch, and letting both guys get a full camp. And I'm all for that. I love Danny Gay. I think it'd be a more competitive fight if he had a full camp to, to train for uh, uh, Diego. But I don't need to see that right now. We saw Diego take the, uh, take the test, and he passed the test. And now he needs to fight somebody lower ranked than him, somebody who's within the top five, maybe the top seven. Because what his plan was last night was to go down and steal the number five ranking from T-City, right? I beat number five. I become number five. He didn't get that opportunity. He had to fight somebody out of his weight class. And then some, so there was no ranking on the line. But I think that should be seen as a featherweight bout, even though it didn't happen at featherweight. It didn't even happen at lightweight. I think they need to figure out what they're going to do with Dan Ige next, but I don't think Diego Lopez needs to be next. I think we need to challenge this guy and see what he can do at the top of the division because his star is bright. If they're putting him in co-main slots on International Fight Week, you know that uh, that says that the UFC sees a lot of promise in this guy. They obviously know he's got the talent, and I think after his performance last night and the way he's able to, to handle the crowd and deal with the big moments, he's got star written all over him. Yeah, well, I mean, he had a top three opponent, and so I think he should probably go back to that, you know, whether it's T-City or whether it's somebody else. That's right. neither here nor there, but they both want to fight at the Sphere, which yeah. I think is great. And Dana said, look, I'll do anything for these guys. When you do, when you step up like that, Dana White is notorious for being a guy that's – he's a tough business guy. He runs the most successful or one of the most successful sports organizations on planet Earth, and he's got fighters from all over the world. And he says, look – you know, when if you want to fight, you want to be in this organization, you step up, you answer the call, you say yes. But if you do that for Dana, Dana forever is in your, you know, you're in his good graces. Right. You, you have his gratitude. And so he's going to give these guys what they want, like Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje, now add Diego Lopez and, and Dan Ige, Alex Pereira. These people have priority with Dana White, and it's because they do these things in these big moments when the company really needs them. So I expect to see both of them on the sphere, but I'm like you. I don't think that they should be against each other. Yeah. I think Dan Ige is, is squarely you know, kind of in that top 10 to 15 in the division. He should compete with somebody there and try to get a couple of wins and to, strung together and, and keep his little streak going and, and get himself to the top. But Diego is kind of on the fast track. Right. So I think somebody in the top five is in order for him. Um, and Maybe a Yair Rodriguez. Now that would be something. I don't know what, what he, if he's booked for anything right now. It seems like a no-brainer to put him on the sphere card. But if you have Yair versus Diego, we got a battle of two guys that – Claim Mexico. Yeah. I know uh, there's some talk about Diego Lopez being Brazilian. I think maybe one of his parents is Brazilian, one's Mexican. He's got rich blood, uh, rich fighting. I know he speaks both, both Portuguese sides. and Spanish. So right. you know, and I noticed that with the translator last night. He was going back and forth. Also, that guy just shout out to that translator. Yeah, he was, bonus for the translator. Right. He's yeah, he was able to go Portuguese, and then when he realized Diego was speaking Spanish, he switched to Spanish, yeah. and then you know he gives that energy in English. You know when he translates. So side note, but yeah. credit to him. Something Great, I could yeah. only dream of being able to do. Exactly. Very cool. But yeah, Diego Lopez, the sky's the limit for this guy. I'd love to see him on the sphere. It's a meaningful fight. And after seeing him last night, I think he's ready to handle the top five, not only the, the, the skill level fighters, but also the pressure that comes with being at the top of the division. I agree.